On this conference Sunday, we join together in a short time of worship, following which you may join the live stream of the worship service at the conference itself. Hello and welcome to our service this morning on the 27th of June, which is Conference Sunday. The Methodist Church has been meeting in its conference all week and this morning shall have its own worship service later. And to enable us to join in with that, if you wish, this act of worship will be somewhat shorter than usual. So let us welcome each other to our time of worship together. Welcome to the family. We are a chosen people, a family people, chosen for love and to share love, chosen for joy and to spread joy, chosen for friendship and for befriending, chosen for blessing and to bless chosen for fruitfulness, chosen for harvest. We are a chosen people, a family people, your family, our family. We are all your people. Welcome to worship. Before we come to our time of prayer, we're going to listen to a short video when we will hear from different people telling us why prayer is important for them. Prayer is important to me because I feel close to God when I pray. Prayer isn't about just petitions. It's a way of developing that loving relationship with our God. Prayer is listening to God's voice and acting on the voice of God. I feel like the power of prayer for me is all about me. This beautiful world and creation that God has created. I pray daily because I'm privileged to live in this beautiful area of the world. Through prayer, I've seen lives and situations transformed and also my relationship with God is strengthened. I pray using a prayer book because I find when I'm in the depths of despair and I have no words to pray, the words lift me and somehow know exactly what I need to say. Prayer is important to me because it gives me a chance to talk to God. It allows me to thank him for everything he's done for me. Prayer sustains me. Just as I need to eat and drink and to breathe, so I need to pray. I pray daily because it's how I communicate with my Papa God and it's how I feel close to him. To get to know God better. Prayer leads us to imitate Christ in our lives. I pray every night with my daughter who is seven and I asked her what she thought was the power of prayer. She said, I love that God listens to us. Praying is important 
for me because it's my way of touching base with God and creating the headspace for getting in touch with myself. I believe in the power of prayer, especially the prayer of thanksgiving, because as I thank God, it reminds me just how present and active He is in my life. Prayer for me is my source of strength and inspiration every day. I pray daily to give thanks to all our blessings and to spend time with our Father. So let us pray. A prayer for God to break through in the life of our churches. God of love, God for all, your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith, of change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus and show us the way. Amen. Today, O oh God, let us know your power to make us strong your counsel to make us wise, your grace to make us holy, and your glory to bring us into your presence. Amen. We come together with the Lord's Prayer, which is taken from the Good News Translation. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honoured, May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done, as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading is from Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 6. My son, do not forget my teaching. But keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favour and a good name in the sight of God and of man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Amen.
This past week has seen the Methodist Conference for this year take place just down the road in Birmingham at the National Motorcycle Museum, just at Junction 6 off the M42. And this morning, um, just before 11 o'clock, their Sunday morning service from the conference will take place. It'll be live streamed so that people across the country can join. So I thought it would be good to spend just a few minutes thinking about the calling of Methodism. What does it mean to say that you're a Methodist? I'm not sure I'm the right person to answer this really because I'm not a Methodist born and bred. I was born into a Christian family who went to the local Church of England church. And it, I became a Christian through the ministry of that Church of England church that um, became more evangelical uh, and it led me to faith in Christ. And it wasn't until I moved down from Lancashire to Stafford over 30 years ago that I came to worship at a Methodist church. So I'm continually still learning about Methodism and what it means. For example, when I first came across the Methodist orb, I wasn't too sure what it meant, if indeed it meant anything. As it happens, it does mean something, and I wonder whether you're all aware of what it does mean. So here's a picture of the Methodist orb. It depends what you see first when you look at it. Some people see a red circle interspersed with white. Some people see a white cross on top of a red circle. Either way, both are specifically chosen. The white cross is chosen to symbolise the glory of the risen Christ. And the red orb or circle is symbolises the world and the Methodist conviction that through the power of the Holy Spirit, anyone and all can be saved. Notice that the cross has no boundary to its arms to the top or the bottom or the left or the right, just as there are no limits to God's grace for all and for the world. This is the symbolism of the Methodist orb. And alongside that orb sits the Methodist calling, which is to respond to the gospel of God's love in Christ and to live out our discipleship in worship and in mission. In other words, that's our calling. For we, you, I, are the Christians across all denominations, are the church. And we are to respond to the gospel of God's love in Christ and to live that out in our worship and in our mission. So let's have a little closer look what that actually means. There are four parts to our calling, the Methodist calling. The first part is worship. You can see it here on the screen. Where we are called to increase our awareness of God's presence and to celebrate God's love in worship. Through our worship, we should together, we should come to know God more intimately and to be more aware of him day by day in our living, to become aware of his presence alongside us and celebrate his love for us. The second part of our calling is to learn and to care, to help people to grow and learn as Christians through mutual support between one another and to care for one another. So to support one another in prayer and in learning so that we might grow as Christians and in our love of God and for one another. The third part of our calling is our service, where we are called to be good neighbours to people in need and to challenge injustice. We are called to be active not passive in our Christian discipleship. And the fourth part of our calling is 
in evangelism and growth. We are called to follow Christ's instruction to go into the world and make more followers of Jesus Christ, to grow his kingdom wherever we may find ourselves and in whatever circumstances. How many of those four callings do we identify with? In our worship, for example, do we come with a yearning to increase our awareness of God's presence? Do we sit and listen for his voice? Do we ask him to speak to us in our worship? Do we come in expectation, expecting to meet with God? Why do we come to worship? Are we in our church families helping one another to learn more about Christian living? Do we support one another in prayer, giving and expecting support and spiritual care? Do we look for people's gifts and talents God given by the Spirit and encourage them to use them? That's why I ended up being a local preacher because someone in the Barkswitch Fellowship took me to one side a few years ago and spoke to me of his calling that he felt it was right that I offered for local preaching. It scared me to death at the time, but proved to be right the calling. Sometimes we need that to help us move forward. Do we build each other up? rather than knock each other down? And how do we serve one another in our church families? Not Well, not only in our church families, but in our communities and the wider world. How are we a good neighbour to them? We're called to be not just a neighbour to the person in the pew or next door or across the road, but across the seas too, across our world. It can be easy, can't it, to become numbed to the effect of need across the world that is put out on our television screens and on our news day by day. But we can ask God to place in our hearts a certain need somewhere in the world that we can support, whether that's in prayer or financially or in action. And alongside this is the call to challenge injustice where we see it, whether that be in small ways or large uh, in part of a corporate action. We cannot turn a blind eye to injustice. Some people say religion and politics don't mix. Well, all I can say is that Christianity and politics absolutely do mix. Christ stepped in to challenge injustice when he saw it, and we are called to do the same. And lastly, but by no means least, how do you make more followers of Jesus Christ? Now that might sound an odd question, so let me put it another way. Does the way you live your life attract people to Jesus? Does what they see in you make them want to know more about Jesus? Why you do things, why you say certain things, why are there certain things you don't do? Some people might say, well, I'm not an evangelist. I can't speak easily about my faith. But actually, in that old adage that actions speak louder than words, the way we live speaks of our faith to those who do not know Jesus yet. It speaks of our faith, our actions, our service, our learning and our caring. All those speak to others of Christ. We are all evangelists for Christ and the kingdom. 
Those at the conference this morning who are being accepted into ministry and ordained in churches across the country have answered their calling to serve in ministry, but they share with us the Methodist calling of worship, learning and caring, service and evangelism and growth. So next time you see the Methodist orb, not only will you know what it stands for, but you may also remember the Methodist calling and be reminded of who we worship and the life he calls us to and of how much we want others to come to know him as their Lord and Saviour. Amen. And as we have been thinking about service and loving and caring for ourselves and our world, so we come to pray. Lord, you set us all as caretakers of your creation. Forgive us that we have been slow to take on this responsibility. Bless and inspire scientists and engineers who are working to devise ways of easing the strain that we have put on your earth. Bless and inspire financial leaders to create and enact environmentally responsible structures for trade. Bless and inspire political leaders with an undaunted vision for environmentally responsible policies and the courage to make responsible stewardship fit seamlessly into our daily lives. Help us all to walk more gently on your earth and live more gently with each other. Amen.
And so we come to the close of our service and our blessing. As we adventure with you today, be the compass that guides us, the light that shines our path, the only one we follow. As we adventure with you today, be the word that encourages, the hand that reaches out each time we stumble. As we adventure with you today, let us glimpse our destination and appreciate the places through which you lead us. As we adventure with you today, be the strength we need to follow. And as the day draws to a close, let us rest in your embrace. Amen. If you would like to share in the service from the conference this morning, details of where to find it online follow in the next slide. Have a good week. God bless.